A happy Sunday afternoon, my people. So you know the tricks by now. First, we're going to do our breathing exercise together. And um, instead of doing the basic breathing, we are actually doing the Jack Drone breathing. That's one of the Taoist exercise. I want you to put your legs, arm, uh, shoulder length, and just bend, maybe 10 degrees, just bend a little bit. Put your hands up. This is, this is called natural hands, right? The hand in Kung Fu, in energy. Right. This is we have later on. We we'll use one of these one of these hand postures in our ten energy movements. So we hold it like you're you're a tree or you're hugging a tree. Yeah. Look at my leg and look at and then you feel your spine is straight and your Bai Hui is the beginning of the wisdom on the top of your head is open up is toward the good energy, yeah? So we're going to do 10 times breathing. Now we will naturally close our eyes. Breathe in from your nose and breathe out from your mouth. Now we bow. We will start our 10 energy movements. The first movement, put your legs shoulder wise. Your hands is touching the sky, yes? Hold it next to your dantian. Bring the energy up. You are creating an energy field for yourself. And your legs is a little better. And then stand up straight when you put your hands up. You are open up your triple burns.
Now, move to the next movement. The leg is, we call that horse mafu, right? You, two and a half of your feet to you hold it as long as you can, right? And then make sure your spine is good. I need to hear your breathing. Your six arm meridian lines. Activating. Now, the third movement, we are balancing your PI, the whole PI system. And the legs are straight, this one. They're not straight. One arm gently touch the sky, the other one the arm, the earth. The next one, the legs also stand straight. Okay, I showed the legs. They are slowly move your neck, and eventually you will be able to look at the butt. They're also squeezing the toxins out of your spine. The next one, again, the horse legs, we call Mahu, right? And you're, you are really, very solidly, you stall yourself into the earth, yeah? You're balancing the heart system and also your small intestines. If you 
uh, insomnia, depression, anxiety, UTI, and this one. Wow. Now the next movement, you will hold the kidney systems and slowly bend over. You do as much as you can, okay? There's no need to push. The whole trick is to do it daily. We are strengthening the spine system. Six leg meridian lines, that means clean up your liver system. That's what you should do. And also, if you have intestinal inflammation and stagnation, that will help as well. So now, let's move to the next one. The legs shoulder wise and bend. Now, bend just comfortably, how you feel comfortable. Open your eyes. Big. Okay. <laughs> Next one. Remember, this is if you have any kidney prostate. UTI, uterus, imbalances, this will help. This is also one of the best way to balance your immune system. Feel your guessing the more of this. Okay. Now we are opening our six lay meridian lines that will clean up our liver system, clean up our kidney system, clean up our spleen system.
to the field, the whole lens has to be on the flow. Excellent. Now, I've heard many people are telling me that they are much more flexible. Good for you. And let's just keep doing it daily. You will be more and more flexible. So, go ahead. your toes are blossoming, spring flower. Today's topic, um, we will introduce a little bit of heart meridian system, heart system, and um, that's the in system, one of the five in system. And uh, what is paired up with the heart system? That's your small intestine system. So I will keep the talk as short as I can and then leave room to ask questions. Uh, we will give five more minutes today to ask questions. The questions doesn't have to be related to today's topics, could be anything, hopefully related to your health. Um, so heart system, what does that mean? The heart system is the king of the all systems. Shen is where you have the spirit and you have the mind. So the heart system is one of the most important system in the whole five yin system and in the whole systems. That's why we call the king, right? We call the emperor, we call the king. So that what the system is helping us do is to govern, right? Remember we said you have governing systems as the yin systems, you have the 
actual doers, the, the systems that actually doing the things for you, that is young system. So this is one of the most important in system. I would say not most important, we also say, but we'll get to, into that later. Um, so the heart system, it's, remember the heart system is the king. So that means that we say is that the heart system does not take any, um, all the best that are sent to the heart system. So what that means is that, that we, let's say if people have imbalances that we, instead of directly treating the heart system, we need to treat the kidney system, treat the stomach system, treat the lungs, and then we get to the heart because the heart will take, right? The heart has the tendency to take all the energies needed because that is, it's, it's how to govern the whole blood system, help to govern all the energy system. So there is really three parts in the heart system. One is we call that Shen. Shen is the spirit. The spirit is given, right? That's the one. It's not, it's, it's the purest of the energy on earth or beyond, right? It's the energy that is given to us. That is, that is really is our ultimate protector. It's we call the, you know, different religion we may call it differently, but there is a spirit that is guiding us and that is 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 protecting us. So Ming, what is Ming? Ming is in Chinese char character is a sun and a moon. That is means that is the purest energy we create ourselves, right? The heart system, we say different systems, different pieces of the soul are hosted in, are housed in. The heart system house the spirit. Also, the heart system create meaning is the best or the most balanced from yin system, from yin, the energy of yin and energy of yang. So that will give us clarity. So that also is the guidance for us in people that um, they have clarity in their mind and uh, they will behave, they will manifest the actions, will, will manifest into the actions of kindness, the energy of, the, and the action of compassion. So the third part that lives in the heart system is our mind, right? We have different, we have our consciousness, we also have different um, elemental feelings that is all hosted or, or manifest uh, into the heart system. So the heart is in five elements. The heart is the element of, remember the five element movements, it's the element of fire. So um, we say the fire right? It's, it's always, it's upward, it's upward. So that's why we are designed to be upward, to, to be always moving, constant moving, and also to be, uh, to be, right? Because be, be a part of be, that is also a movement itself. So that being said, so now we know the heart system, there are three things. Spirit is given. Yin is the yin, the best, the most balanced yin energy and yang energy that create that yin for us, and that is the balanced energy. And uh, also that we have mind, right? That also the heart system has manifest. Our mind is hosted in there as well. So that's a little bit of the heart system. So when the heart system is out of balance, people are likely to be anxious. They are likely to have 
insomnia, and um, um, they are likely to um, have psychological imbalances. So that's the heart system. Now, the heart system is paired with the small intestines, small intestine system in traditional Chinese medicine that the small intestines is responsible for receiving, right, from the, the, the food and liquid um, from the stomach and spleen and uh, sorting off, right, and transforming what is useful that the best part can give back to your spleen system that will be distributed uh, throughout your system. And uh, the things that is not so useful anymore, and that is moved to big intestines and also is moved to uh, your bladder system. So that's been said, the small intestines also has a lot to do with helping people to balance their mind. And uh, because if the small intestines, think about it, it's quite interesting that if your small intestine system is well balanced, then you are able to sort out what is useful, what is useless, right? So then you are able to give your system what is needed, the information, the, 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 the so-called information, the, the best of nutrition and everything is needed to nourish your system and also surround what is not so useful, right? Then we just let it, the system will let it out. What people, um, but think about you can only take that much. You must be careful what, what you put in your system and what you eat and also what you hear and what you watch because all these things get absorbed in your system and so all end up in your small intestine system and help you to sort out. If you overwhelm it, like most people do nowadays, what you end up with, you will end up not able to separate what is the most nutritious things for the system, what is the right, the best part of it, and what is not so useful will let go, right? That isn't that what happened to a lot of people that you are overwhelmed with information, you don't know what to sort to give where, and then you end up being confused, being stressed out, and being giving too much uh, stress to your heart system. Isn't that what happened today? So how do you know your small intestines is doing well? Um, if you can pee properly, right, you know your small intestines are doing well. If you don't have a big belly, then you know your small intestines is doing well. And uh, especially with women, if you don't have the butterfly, we have the, um, the procedures type treat women with the butterfly on their face. If you don't have that, then you know your small intestines is doing well. Also, if you are able to sort out what is useful, and what is not, and uh, then you can transform that part of the information uh, into your heart system and into your liver system, into your gallbladder, so the gallbladder can help you to make a correct decision, but the correct decision has to have the options, the information, right? So who can give you that piece? That's your small intestines. So I know this may not uh, make a lot of sense. Um, we will, next week, we will pick up some uh, imbalances, some illnesses, we say this is heart related and why instead of treating your heart, I'm treating your liver, why instead of treating your heart, I'm treating your stomach and spleen, and why is that? Part of it, I want you to remember, is because the heart system is the king. King will always demand what needs to be given. So the whole system has to be strong for us to pull that energy up. 
So that is one thing. But how do you open up your heart system, right? How do you uh, um, keep the, we call that zheng qi. Zheng qi is the healing energy and get rid of the xie qi. Xie qi is the energy of illness, and the energy of destruction. So how do you quickly do that? Let me teach you a trick. Our little armor, and you can either use this one or you use your hands. You find both sides of your nipples. Okay, you draw a line. That is one of the very important point. It's called Tan Zhong. So let me ask you this. When people bow, okay, so what are you protecting? What are you telling people? What, what does that mean when you bow to people? Why you put your hands here? You says, I am giving you my healing energy. I am letting the destructive energy, I'm letting the illness energy go. I'm, I'm giving you, I am giving you, you don't bow like this, right? You bow like this. I am giving you the healing energy, the best wishes, right? You are holding your thumbs, your tantrum. It's one thing is to protect yourself, right? Because you don't know whom you're bowing. You think you know, but sometimes you don't. So, and then you bow out of saying, I am, I am giving you the healing. I am sending you the best wishes of healing energy, right? I am letting the ill energy go. I am at the same time protecting my own country. So that's what it means. So that is what Tanjung does for you. Tanjung is the point that will keep the healing energy, will promote the healing energy, will let go of the destructive energy. So what you can do is you can use your little hammer to hammer it. Find the tendon, you just hammer it a hundred times a day, and after that, you go downwards, right? You let that energy go. So you do a hundred times, and you do ten times. So that is how you help to promote your heart system, and also cold massage, and we teach you an intestinal massage we teach you. That's one of the best way to help with their small intestines. So I am going to leave uh, time um, for questions. Dr. Liu, you touched upon uh, everything that we watch and hear are, as also uh, triggers for imbalances that can be stored in the heart and the small intestine. Could you shed a little bit more light on that, please? Um, give me an example that what, what is it that you want to know? So when you say things that we're watching or hearing, is that because they're being processed through the mind there, or we are reacting to the things that we're watching and hearing? How does that impact so, those systems? So that we have, um, we have all the, we have all these senses, right? We have these meridian lines open. So I really do think that a lot of times that information are given that to us, they're not random. They're carefully crafted and carefully designed. And the goal is to, um, to achieve the goals that, that these messages have in, in they have that purpose as well, uh, either to make you care of something, buy something, and so you can pay, or whatever it is. Um, but think about if you consume too much of that, you give your the the energy that you spend on to sort this information out is overloading. And then the other thing is that what you put in your mouth. You know, the quality of the water, the quality of your food, and also that how your body can um, digest that, can absorb that, 
and that is very important, right? So do not overload yourself. Do not overwhelm yourself. Because if you overwhelm yourself, your senses are all, it's not, it's supposed to help you to decide, help you to sort out, but it's too much. So then you end up having more and more toxins being in your system from the food, from what you hear. And that's remember in um, our clinic, one of the little monks sit there and uh, powering the ears. But why? Because we don't need, really need to hear that. We don't need to hear it now. So that is what I try to encourage people to, um, to be aware of. Hope that answers your question. That does answer my question. So there's no regulation in that way. There's just constant bombardment and then the body is unable to regulate. Exactly. So one could say that something that could offset that or help to regulate would be like taking a break from the news, for example, as simple as this may sound and just being outside or being in nature or being yes. in a quiet space. Yes, just go out and take a walk and uh, try to hear what nature is to tell you because that will exercise your compassion and hear the birds sing. Their, their language is so pure and their message is so simple and that brings joy in you. But the joy, again, the heart, the emotion of the heart, we explained the emotion of the liver in our last teaching, the emotion of the heart is two words, right? Joy and happiness. Joy is Shen is the spirit when you are doing something that that really nourish the spirit, the spirit nourish you back, then you feel a great sense of joy. When you are doing something to other to nurture a relationship with another human, then you feel a sense of happiness, right? Because happiness you don't have boundaries. So we say the right amount of happiness is going to nourish your heart. A too much excessive so-called happiness that will disarrange, that will disharmonize your heart system. So if you, yeah, if you see someone sits there, ha 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 ha, they cannot stop laughing, you know, this one has the mind, we say that the heart energy cannot host the mind anymore. This one is going gaga. Yeah. Dr. Liu, as we get older, uh, so we have some of our listeners are uh, women who are transitioning through menopause or in men's case, you know, who are maybe in andropause. How does aging impact the health of these systems? It's, um, it's just get a little bit, uh, slower and uh, because you have over the years a little bit more of uh, the toxins build up but it doesn't mean um, but if you just keep practicing daily then th that shouldn't influence that much so in other words you can age very gracefully but exercise you have to do. You have to do. Um, so physiologically, as we age, are there certain things like hormonal changes that can impact the health of these systems? Uh, yes. Yes. Uh, people may feel they're more anxious because their heart system is weaker and their heart energy is weaker. So the heart young energy is weaker. So they may feel they have fluttering in their heart um, and they may feel they are, they are more tuned to have anxiety, but that can be offset by doing certain exercise and by knowing this is a part of the process, we just need to take a deep breath and breathe through certain things. Because the life has all kinds of elements. It's not always a happy, you know, fairy tale. You can't be. That's why I call it a fairy tale. Life has all the flavors. I like that, all the flavors. 
Uh, Dr. Liu, we have uh, some questions about the pattern of discoloration that you alluded to. You uh, referred to it as the butterfly pattern. Can you describe what that looks like and uh, why that might come to the surface? And is that something that can equally impact men and women? Uh, yes. The butterfly uh, pattern is one your small intestine system cannot uh, separate the, the useful with the useless so that your system get more toxins than when they distribute supposedly only the best part of the best and have some toxins kind of get bought into that manifest mostly uh, in your skin since the small intestines and this part the the channel goes through this part so sometimes people may feel they have some uh, dark kind of um, uh, brownish spot it's like a butterfly it mostly happen in a uh, woman uh, sometimes men as well so, and the other thing is that if you feel you have more kind of UTI symptoms, and then that also a small intestine. Uh, I remember seeing one, I said, maybe most clearly small intestines. They go, oh, no, I have UTI, that's my bladder. There's a connection. Dr. Liu, you talked a lot about the spirit that resides in the heart system. Can you talk a little bit about spiritual practices and how important that is for sustaining good heart health? So what um, lately I've been really meditating on the topic of why human beings feel they are so special. I haven't really got the answer yet. Um, but if, if we do feel we are somewhat, our souls are more advanced, then what is it that are given to us? I do believe other creatures have the guidance of the spirits as well. But what is it to make humans unique? Is we, is the sense that, or is the energy that we have, we have this pure spirit that we are so fortunate, so blessed to have a pure spirit that are guiding us and are housed in us. So I think in a way that make us human, right? So that make us, to, that helps us to be, develop a sense of compassion. That sense of compassion is, can feel if nature is ill, we feel the pain. Others, um, other creatures are ill, are being treated so cruelly. We supposed to feel the pain in our heart. We supposed to have the compassion so we can take action because great honor and privilege were given that comes with responsibility. Right. So the heart, that spirit in us can really help us to develop a sense of compassion. And from there, we will have a great sense of love. That is what makes us human. That is really joyful, Dr. Liu. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, sadly, we are out of time, Dr. Liu. It's always a pleasure to hear your thoughts and teachings. Thank you so much. You are welcome. Until next Sunday, my people. Sunday, actually, but thank you, Dr. Liu. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Liu. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Liu. Thank you, Sarah. We love you. We love you. Thank, Thank you, Dr. Lou. Lou. Thank you. We appreciate you. Thank you, Thank Dr. You. Lou. Thanks, Sarah. Bye, Dr. Lou. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Lou. Thank you. Thank